So the fluke is one of my favorite baits. It works on any body of water and will catch bass almost anywhere you fish. Uh, but today we're gonna show you a little trick on how I like to rig my flukes that not only will save you some money while you're fishing your flukes, have you catching more fish on one bait, but it's also going to help you land more fish because of the way we're gonna set this up here. So stay tuned, we're gonna break down everything you need to know, rod, reel, line, and we're gonna show you how to fish this thing in today's video. So what do I like to do with this fluke here to make sure I'm catching more fish and why does it work? What I have here is a screw lock hook. This is an owner um, light wire. I think, I don't even know the name of it. I'll show you the packaging right here. It's some type of light wire screw hook uh, and it has a uh, basically an extra wide gap design. So it's similar, it's like a hybrid between an extra wide gap hook, but with a screw lock in the front. What this screw lock is going to do is extend the longevity of your baits. So when you catch a fish, instead of them just whipping the bait off while they're jumping, that bait's gonna stay on there and you're gonna be able to use it time and time again. Now, also what this is going to do, whenever you fish an extra wide gap hook, I, when I fish them all the time, you'll be twitching it, a fish will bite it, you'll set the hook, and it'll just ball up right in front of the hook point and you won't get a good hook set on them and you miss fish over and over and over again. I started rigging it this way and what happens is that bait can't ball up because they can't yank this down the hook shank. It's fixed to the head. So when they bite it, it collapses and you're gonna get hook gap every single time. So you get a little bit better hook set. You're still not gonna get a great hook set. That's just how a fluke is. Uh, but you're gonna get hook gap every single time with this technique. It's never gonna do the balling up in front uh, and block you from catching a fish. Uh, it, it's one of my biggest pet peeves with fishing a fluke. Every time you set the hook on a fish, it'll always ball up and then you get like one fish with every fluke and then once it rips up by the head, it just keeps balling up every time you twitch it. Never works right again after that. So this is gonna extend the longevity of your bait. We're gonna show you all about how to fish it and hopefully catch a couple fish along the way. But first, let's break down our rod and reel setup here that I'm gonna use for this. So you don't need anything different than you would with a regular fluke. This hook isn't anything special. It's the same thing. You're not gonna need a heavier rod or anything to actually set the hook. All I use is my jerkbait and topwater rod. This is a six foot nine, light, medium, heavy. It's almost like a medium action. Um, it's a little bit stiffer. So anything six foot nine to seven foot three, medium to medium heavy action. That's what you're looking for, for this technique. Um, it'll have the backbone you need to be able to set the hook. I go with the shorter rod just so I can work this bait more effectively. Um, I don't wanna be hitting the ground or anything or the water while I'm twitching this bait around. So I go with the little bit shorter rod to be able to work the bait properly. I also go with a seven one to one gear ratio. A lot of times I'm fishing this bait high up in the water column. I'm not gonna be twitching it real slow down in the water column. I wanna be able to pick up my slack quickly and if a fish comes up and eats this thing and swims towards me, it's a weightless bait. He can go wherever he wants. They're gonna go pretty quick with this bait, especially if you're working it quicker. I need that bait, uh, that seven one to one gear ratio to be able to pick up the slack real fast, catch up to those fish and get a good hook set. So I really like the faster gear ratio there. And then for line, um, we're in Florida, so I have 17 pound test fluorocarbon on here, but I usually use 14 pound test fluorocarbon. It's just a lighter, it gives the bait a more natural action. I went a little bit heavier so that I can fish it higher over these weeds. And if I get a big one, I can make sure to land that fish. Uh, but typically 14 pound test is the way that I like to go. It'll give your bait a more natural action because of the way that the, uh, the line is a little bit more limp uh, and not as thick in diameter. So it won't have as much drag on the surface or anything like that. So super basic setup. Um, I do not get fancy with this technique whatsoever. Uh, fluke is a fluke. It will always catch fish. It's very basic, um, but that hook is really gonna help you catch more fish and keep flukes on longer. So let's take this setup out on the water. We'll show you how to fish it around some of this Florida stuff. Hopefully we'll catch a couple fish along the way and show you what this hook can do for you. So now that we talked about how to rig this fluke up with this new hook style and making it last longer in the water, we're gonna fish some area here uh, and hopefully show you how well this bait can work and come through this cover. We are fishing in Florida, so as you'll notice, we have tons of cover all scattered up and down the bank. And usually this grass would wreak havoc on an extra wide gap fluke. You'd get it caught up in a piece of grass and go to yank it and it would just pull the bait right down the hook, ruin the bait, now you can't fish with it anymore and cause you all kinds of problems throughout the day. So we're gonna fish this around this heavier cover. Um, I'm pulling it right through these weeds right now without any problem. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, cook on down the bank here and see if we can 
catch us a couple fish around some of this heavy cover, maybe even get a big one. Now, while this fluke is an excellent way to rig it by keeping your baits alive longer and keeping the fish on better, uh, this will not eliminate the line twist that is associated with fluke. So if you're not using braid, I highly recommend putting like a swivel 18 inches up your line, just a small barrel swivel to make that line twist only happen in the last 18 inches of line rather than ruining your whole spool. Um, I did not put one on today, mostly because this line's very old and when I'm done with this line, uh, we're gonna stop fishing with it anyway. So I'm just letting it run its course and when the line's done, it's done. But I would also highly recommend putting that swivel on there if you're going to fish this. That's the number one problem with flukes. They get a ton of line twist, um, especially on fluorocarbon or monofilament line because they'll do spirals and the way they dart back and forth causes it to have a lot of problems. So if that's something you're going to do, highly recommend the swivel on the end. I think we're gonna venture on back in this canal here. Um, yesterday I was seeing a lot of bass up shallow chasing bait in these canals. Um, I'm thinking they're small males after this cold front they've moved up and they're getting ready to claim their beds on this warming trend that's about to happen here later in the week. Um, so we might not catch a big one back in here but we might be able to find us a couple fish that want to eat a fluke and are chasing some bait around up shallow. So unfortunately that canal was unsuccessful. Um, we didn't even have a bite or see a sign of life. So there is a little flat that goes around the corner here where I think they might be staging up there to work their way into these canals. And if that doesn't work, there's also a better canal right around the corner on the other side of this flat. So they have two canal options they can go into um, and spawn. And then if they're not ready to spawn, they can just hang out here on the flat with some cover and a little bit of docks in the middle. Um, so we'll fish through here and see if we can find us one. So that flat was unsuccessful, so we're gonna go ahead and try up in this canal here. This one's the better one, so we're gonna see if we can have any luck fishing up in there. I also think I'm gonna change out my fluke to a Houdini fluke, uh, Houdini colored fluke. It's more of a golden shiner color. Um, I've had a lot of luck catching them on it down here. So we're gonna give that a shot. Let's go ahead and grab one and we'll show you actually how to rig this bait up as well while we're at it. So all you do with this bait here to rig it up I'm just gonna take this centering pin right here and line it up right with the nose of the bait, jam it on in there, and then I'm just gonna screw that right up on the hook like you would anything else, a shaky head or whatever technique you're fishing um, that has a screw lock. So now I got it nice and lined up and you want it in line with the eye of the hook. And then I'm just gonna take this guy, line it up, gently hook her through there and then just text pose it and now we're ready to fish. So let's see if the color change and going in this little bit better canal here will give us a fish because they are making me work for it today. So let's get after it. There we go. Hey, we found one. Come here. So I know this is not a big one whatsoever, but as you can tell right there, that hook went straight through. It's hooked really, really well. That fluke did not ball up on the hook and miss a hook set. I can pop this guy off. Tiny one will let him go. And my fluke is ready to go back and fish again. So heck of a day. We worked really hard for that fish. I know it was a tiny one, but if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Check out this video right here if you want to see some other ways to rig a fluke and catch more bass on a fluke. So thank you for watching. We're going to get back to fishing.